good now, but it wasn't always that way. I'm going to take this little cap off so I can check the oil. Oil looks good, nice and clean, doesn't burn any oil. But that's not always the way this car was. There was a website called yellowbullet.com. It was a good forum for hot rod stuff. It's kind of been taken over by Canadians. It's not as good anymore, but Yellow Bullet was pretty good. And I posted a thread on Yellow Bullet. Big block Chevy burns a quart of oil every 400 miles. And I got 35,000 replies to that thread. It was a pretty successful thread. And everybody talked about all of the different problems about why your car could be burning oil. Well, the obvious thing is, well, maybe the rings are bad. Or maybe the valve guides are worn out. Or maybe the valve stem seals are leaking. Or maybe the bolts that go from the head um, through the intake manifold are leaking. Or maybe it's the intake manifold gaskets that are allowing oil to get sucked into the intake track and burning the oil. Or maybe there was a just went on and on with the maybes, but none of the maybes really answered the problem. I talked to one fellow who told me it's the big block. When you get to a big bore, this is a four and a half inch bore, and you're running a lot of RPMs, run 6,500, 6,800. The time that the piston spins at the top of the cycle, when the piston is just come up to the high spot and it hasn't unloaded yet, and then it turns over and the rod starts pulling it down, there's a little tiny bit of rock in there, and supposedly you lose ring seal at that point in time. And the guy told me he had the same problem with the big block Mopar, and what solved his problem was a vacuum pump. Now, I think it's more than that. I think it's more than just the piston rock, and I think it's a combination of windage in the oil pan. I think that um, a crank scraper, a different oil pan, might make a big difference here, but I don't have the room for that. I've already notched a cross member to get this... Um, Moroso pan that I've got. No, it's a Mylanin pan that I've got on it now um, to fit. And um, I think with different windage, this would be a different situation. But this is where I'm at. So I said, okay, let me try a vacuum pump. And the vacuum pump solved my problem too. Let me tell you about what was involved in putting the vacuum pump on the car. It wasn't easy. I had to fabricate my own pulley for the bottom because the pulley had to go on the front of the balancer and I needed to have that pulley have enough room so I could still get a wrench down through that pulley to turn the crank over by hand and I needed to have that pulley be small enough to fit onto the existing um, March pulley that I've got on the car right now. So this took fabricating a pulley. It took a little bit of drawing, and I'll show you some pictures of what was involved in getting that lower pulley worked out. Because the idea with the vacuum pump is that you want the vacuum pump to turn at half the speed of the engine. So that meant I needed a small pulley on the balancer and a larger pulley on the vacuum pump. And I got it worked out just as slick as sliced bread. That line across the front in front of the carburetor is a pickup line for the vacuum pump. The vacuum comes off the um, valve cover on the passenger side there. That blue fitting is a um, regulator. I can leak a little bit of air into the suction so you don't get too much suction. And then that vacuum line draws um, into this pump. Looks like a power steering pump, but it's a vacuum pump. And that pulls seven, eight inches of vacuum. That helps with ring seal, it helps with uh, leaks and oil drips and all that kind of stuff. Just all around better deal with the vacuum pump. And then the pump expels whatever um, leftover air there is to a catch can that's underneath the fender in the front fender well. And there's that pickup line in the fender well. And that actually goes 
to a little tank on the bottom in case there ever is any leftover oil, but there never is. Oh, and then it vents air on the top, but that air is clean. There's no oil or anything in it. So the key with the vacuum pump is the engine has to be sealed up tight. Um, if the engine's not sealed up tight, you're going to draw air in from some place, valve cover, uh, back of the oil pan, some place, and that air is going to pull oil with it, and run that oil through the oil pump, and you're going to be filling up your catch can with oil because you got an air leak. So I got good valve covers on this. These are stock GM valve covers. I like them a lot. Um, the back fitting is welded up. I've got my line coming off that goes to the... Um, I keep a suction gauge in the car. It's an aviation-style suction gauge. I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty dark in here, but um, I run that aviation... There you go. I run that suction gauge because it's a small scale on the dial, and you can see I like to be about 7 pounds, 7 and a half pounds, um, something like that, so it's easy to keep an eye on it with that suction gauge. And then that fitting on the valve cover, um, if the valve... If the vacuum pump goes out for any reason, I can just take that off and screw a breather on there and disconnect this side over here and just be running like regular breathers. But the oil pan needs to be sealed good, um, the timing chain cover sealed good, you need a good seal at the base of the distributors so you're not drawing any air in through there. Um, and then the dipstick, um, I keep a little um, plastic uh, tube end on the dipstick so that everything stays tight and when I check the little reserve tank that I've got on the bottom, little overflow tank, if I check that, um, that tank maybe has a half a teaspoon or three quarters of a teaspoon of oil in it. Um, there's not ever any oil that comes up. Everything's nice and clean underneath the car. There's no drips. There's no anything because that vacuum pump keeps everything under vacuum in the crankcase. Now that has nothing to do with the vacuum that's in the intake manifold underneath the carburetor when the car is running. That's, that's different vacuum. It's the same vacuum, but it's not the same vacuum. Anyway, that's the deal with the vacuum pump. And... Um, it works. It helps with the ring seal. That vacuum inside the engine um, lets the ring seal better, and that's where you pick up a little bit of horsepower. But I like it because it keeps everything clean, and the engine doesn't burn any oil. There you go.